In a recent discussion with Vanity Fair, Star Wars Episode Seven director J.J. Abrams revealed that his contract for the film technically gives him final cut on the film. He acknowledges that when you do a Disney project, there's a clause in there that you kind of go, well, if I were a lawyer, I could probably drive a truck <laughs> through it. He also went on to say the following. I cannot say enough about how Bob Iger and Alan Horn have understood this thing that is now part of the Disney company. Abrams added, and they're not trying to Disneyify it. They're not doing anything other than, I think, an incredibly smart thing, which is letting Kathleen Kennedy, who is a remarkable person and producer, run and lead Lucasfilm to a place where I think it wants to go. John Byers said that J.J. Abrams actually has final cut on Star Wars Episode Seven. Um, I'm going to say the really unpopular thing here and say I sell that he has final edit, and I wouldn't want him to have true, you know, above all else authority final edit on this film. Why? Because this is the first film in a new series, and he's only going to be there for one of them. And I want the people to have who I want the people to have final say that are going to be here for the whole thing. And that's Kathleen Kennedy. And I think that J.J. Abrams is kind of saying that in, in this in many ways. He says, "Look, yeah, in my contract I have final edit, but this is Disney, <laughs> which means they get, the contract can say whatever you want it to say. Disney will have final say." But then what I thought was really revealing is when he talked about Kathleen Kennedy. He's saying, "Look, Iger and Horn, who are two very smart dudes." Iger and Horn seem to be putting all their trust in Kathleen Kennedy. I think the real person in charge here is Kathleen Kennedy, and I think that's the way it should be. She's going to be shepherding this entire franchise, from the episodes to the anthologies to everything else. She's the person in charge. You need one person who's like the buck stops here and all these kinds of things, and she, trust me, she still has to answer to Horn and Iger. Absolutely she does. Remember, she wanted to move Star Wars off the December date into 2016, and uh, Iger went, Nah, no, you're going to do it in December. Thank you, Bob, by the way. Um, so I, what I really think what, jo, what JJ is saying here is I think JJ is saying the real person in charge here is Kathleen, and she's probably letting him have all his creative freedom at the same time. This looks like a really healthy functioning studio production relationship where you do have the ultimate guys in charge who can be the buck stops here and say, nope, you're not doing that in the head studio heads, but they are handling that power correctly with the way they're dealing with Kathleen Kennedy, who is handling her relationship correctly with J.J. Abrams, who with J.J. who's then being allowed to do his thing. There's checks and balances. This looks like the model for a healthy functioning production workflow mm. if I've ever seen it. And I it just makes me even more excited, to be honest. Mark, what do you think? And I hope it continues to be the model of how you make a giant production like this because the less we hear about contracts and lawyers and what would hold up in court, the better. I, I don't want that to be the reality. I want the reality to continue to be X-Wings and lightsabers and Wookiees. That's what I believe in. J.J. Abrams, I don't think, has Final Cut, even in his contract, even though he is producing all of the new trilogy, correct? So he's going to be, he's going to have some say in what goes into all of those films, but you're right. I think Kathleen Kennedy is the person where the buck finally stops. J.J. Abrams has full creative control to make his movie, and then he's going to do the cut as he sees fit, and then Kathleen Kennedy is going to lay her eyes on it and just just maybe give some notes, but I think that her and J.J. are so on the same page and have been since they met uh, you know, three years ago to talk about this that I think we're going to get the movie that everybody wants to release. Now, this just came out on Twitter. J.J. Abrams says, there was a cut of this movie that I was really proud to show you guys a year ago. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we're probably... Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that's a different movie. Boo. I'm sorry. Different hey, movie. Different you know what? Guy. I think, like, when George Lucas met with Kathleen Kennedy to turn over the keys to her... You know, that 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 she's in charge of the Star Wars universe as we see it. She's the one who who said, look, we're not going to go forward with that that video game that was going to be all like the dungeons of, you know, Coruscant with the, the villains and the cartels like level one, two, three or whatever it was called. Um, they canceled the, the comedy animated detours because they were like, look, we want people to take Star Wars seriously again. Like, we can't keep making fun of all of our characters. That's a joke right now. So they made a conscious effort to reform the idea of what a Star Wars movie could be before even J.J. Abrams got hired. So even even he had he came in with a script that was already written, and then that him and Lawrence Kazan rewrote it. So there's a lot of that. A lot of J.J.'s footprint is going to be in this movie. Oh, absolutely! Not only as a writer, not only as a producer, as a director. And I do believe he has a version of Final Cut, not like the Apple Final Cut <laughs> editing, but a version of Final Cut. Whereas, like some directors, when they say I have Final Cut, that means that it's like lock print. You know, it goes right to the movie theaters. This is a this is my final cut. 
do you want to change anything? Or there, like, I think it's a discussion of Final Cut. But I gotta believe that that those discussions that you're talking about, and I think you're nailing it. I think those discussions will happen before JJ gets to that end edit. Mm. I think oh, totally. JJ's a smart enough guy, and Kathleen is smart yes. enough. Iger, that they're all having these discussions ongoing. So by the time they get to that point where JJ's ready to say this is the final edit, I think he's already gotten all the input from all the other people because you're right. I mean, yeah. that's just the way to handle it, right? And they seem yeah. to be doing that's that. That's the best way to handle any large production. Is like it's not like you know some king like it's my final cut. It's like we've all agreed that this is the final cut, and then they sign off. It's on. it's the way that Pixar makes a lot of their movies too. Have the yes. opportunity to be up yes. at Pixar, yeah. and they a lot of times they sit in a room. First of all, Pixar a lot of their projects use multiple directors, and then they have all the producers in there as well. And right. so everybody that is involved in the production is in there, and they sit in this room, and they all go around the room, and they start talking about oh I like this, I didn't like this. So it's a very collective unit yeah. as opposed to having somebody that is just George Lucas. Whereas if he was still involved in Lucasfilm, he would have Final Cut. But that's not the case anymore. Kathleen Kennedy has a lot of his power, but it's still going to be a collective decision as to what actually hits theater. I think his thing would be called Avid Cut. But <laughs> <laughs> I think what you're talking about, it's actually a technical term for it. It's called the Chime Squad, where everyone just <laughs> chimes in and it just gets thrown in. It's the Chime Squad. And it's you're right. That is the way Pixar, they, they do these films by committee, which is, I mean, hey, you can't argue with their results.